Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Tan, and this is a Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We are focusing the entire month of March, and I don't think I've done this before, maybe a long time ago, because I've been doing this for a while, focusing entirely on Washington Wines because March is the original Washington Wine Month. You know, I know they do one in August, but you know what, guess what, I'm going to kind of dominate March with Washington Wines. I might do a couple in August, but we'll see. I don't think we should have two Washington Wine Months just saying. In fact, they do the Taste of Washington in March, which I didn't get a chance to go down to. I'm kind of bummed about that, but, you know, can't get them all, like I'm saying. So, the last episode I did Gruner Veltliner, which was really cool. I really love the uh, Vital from Ashley Trout. I like the Gilbert Cellars as well. Both like both those wineries. They were great Gruners. You know, considering the price, 22 bucks. you know, who grows Gruner in Washington State? I'm still researching that. I'll let you know if I can find out the answer to that. But now we're going to another kind of interesting varietal that they do in Washington State. And I've seen more of these than I have Gruner Veltliner, and that's Albrino, which is generally comes from Spain up in the northwest, uh, Rios Bashes. Uh, but, you know, they do a lot of Albrino up there. But I have been seeing more and more Albrino coming out of Washington State, which is really interesting. And in my memory, most of them have been pretty decent wines. So we have two here from Washington State, um, both pretty iconic Washington producers. So I'm excited to get into this. Albrino from Washington State. Who knew? What the heck? Barnard Griffin, Albrino. 2021, uh, Columbia Valley. Uh, Rob Griffin has been a winemaker, very respected uh, uh, winemaker in Washington State, Rob Griffin. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, love his wines. I love his wines. He's a good friend of mine, actually. So sometimes it's hard to review Rob Griffin's wines. But this is 2021, Barnard Griffin, Albarino, Columbia Valley. $18. Obviously, they produce a little bit more Albrino than Gruner. That's why the price is a little bit less, 18 bucks. I like that price point, by the way. Rob, uh, a couple years ago, he was my winery of the year. I think he does some excellent wines. His daughter is starting to take over some of the winemaking duties. She's doing a great job as well. This has got gold all over it, just saying. Okay, let's see what we get on the nose. First hit was banana, mango, papaya. And you know, it's so funny with banana. It's, 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 a, it's a descriptor that if I put it on a sign at the store, people kind of shy away from it. I like bananas. I'm not talking about ripe, ripe bananas. I'm talking about a fresh banana, the smell. Yeah, I'm gonna go banana, mango, papaya. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice acidity, really backs the mango papaya. No banana on the palate, by the way. Not at least, not a lot of it, unless it's a little bit on the green side banana. And then a little bit of pineapple as well. Very tropical Albarino here. Uh, and very intense. I mean, this has nice intensity, probably because of the acidity, but I like this one. Good complexity, good acidity, nice balance. The acidity doesn't take over. It's nicely integrated. Backs the papaya, mango, pineapple notes. Solid, solid Albrino. This reminds me, a little minerality too. A little bit of minerality, which is really cool. A little bit of that crushed rock sort of thing, but not dominant. This could, this could. I don't. Let lightning strike me, but this could rival some uh, Al uh, Rios Bashes, Albarinos. I get the texture of banana on the mid palate. It's there. Solid wine, good acidity, good balance. Talk about a seafood wine. Shellfish, unbelievable. 
muscles. I would, I know it's $18, but just splash a little bit when you're sauteing your mushrooms with the butter and whatnot. Fantastic. It would be fantastic. Mouthwatering, delicious, fresh. I love this wine. I have nowhere to go but A on that one. Solid Albarino. Now, good start. That's what I call it. 2022. This is a 21. This is 22. Thurston Wolf, another great producer in Washington State. I like Thurston Wolf wines. Crawford Vineyard Albarino Yakima Valley. So here we go. Yakima, one of my favorite. And one of the oldest, the oldest AVA in Washington State. I think established in 1983. Uh, Yakima Valley. This was in also at $18. Thurston Wolf. Both these wineries I'm a huge fan of. And, you know, Dr. Wolf, he does a good job making wines. We had a great tasting with him on Zoom a couple years ago. Uh, Straw colored, a little bit golden, not as golden as the Rob Griffin's wine, Barnard Griffin. What did we get on the nose? It's kind of exciting. It's exciting to delve into the you know unusual grape varietals that they do in Washington State that they do so well. It really is. I mean, A to start. This has kind of a creamsicle nose, uh, very tropical as well. I'm getting mango, I'm getting papaya. A little bit of orange blossom, kind of orange thing going on. So I said creamsicle, just so you know. Has a creamier nose in the uh, Bernard Griffin. Let's see what we get on the palate. Kind of excited. A little rounder. This is okay. This is a ten in the delicious category. Papaya, mango, orange, creamsicle sort of flavors coming through. A richer palette on this one than the Barnard Griffin. I'm glad I did it in this order. I had no idea. Can't remember. It's been a while since I've tried these. This just hangs on. This is, and, and, and okay, here we go with the alcohol content. This is 13%. Rob's is 12.9. I mean, that's a neck and neck, right? They're right there, right at 13. This just tastes, has a richer texture to it. Beautiful mango, papaya. I'm thinking apricot, a little bit of orange creamsicle. Let me throw in this. So this definitely smacks New World, not in a bad way, in a good way. Whereas Rob's smacks kind of, his is more of an old world style with that kind of crushed rock minerality. This doesn't have the minerality, but man, does it have the delicious factor in it. Wow. This would be like, if you served this to a group of people at your house, if you didn't you know, like Rob's, you'd have to make sure that you, you would have to have some shellfish with this. Hats off to Rob for doing that. But for this one, you could serve it at a group of people and go, wow, what is this? Wow. It's an Albarino from Washington State. And it tastes like a New World Albarino, but in a very good way. It has a lot of those tropical flavors. Whereas Rob went more pineapple, this is more into that rounder kind of apricot, mango, papaya, good acidity. Not as high in acid as Rob's, but definitely good acidity on this one as well. Yeah, you could have the, you could have this. It has enough of that sweetness to it. There is some sweetness to this, but not in a Riesling way. Well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Moscato way. Not in a Moscato way, but it hedges toward that kind of Moscato-ish is that a word? Moscato-ish? Anyway, heads in that kind of Moscato-ish flavor profile without getting that sweet. Just has that kind of nice fruit forward edge to it on the mid palate into the finish. I love this one. I love them both. I'm going to go in on that one for a whole different reason. 
very well made, very complex, very nice. Rob's, you know, just very Spanish-like in a very good way. Awesome. Both these Albarinos are awesome with two different personalities, but still both very tropical. Yeah, no use getting snobby about it. I mean, if you this would be a crowd pleaser. This would be like an old world wine lovers, you know, new shellfish. This could go with Asian noodles. A little bit of spice to that dish wouldn't hurt this one at all. I would have this with a cheesecake. Would be awesome. Just saying, but it's like I said, it's not that sweet. It's just fruit forward. Uh, I love it. I love them both. Both give them both an A. They're both at the same level in different ways. If you understand what I'm saying. So, I think I asked the question, what is your favorite kind of interesting varietal from Washington State? We're doing whites now. We're going to go into reds, of course. But, uh, I mean, the amount of wines that they do in Washington State, uh, like I said, Pinot is the only one, Pinot Noir is the only one that they don't love. But they can do a lot of other wines, and it's very exciting to try them. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I hope you're enjoying these episodes on Washington State Wine. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe or tell your friends about this program. Let them know that there's this guy that's nailing wines on YouTube. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.